I'm starting today with a pre-made background and if you saw last week's video it had five background techniques to try out so go and watch that one when you've finished watching this one or maybe you've got a copy of my Get Creating download then if so you've already been introduced to a few of my techniques and I love to use these to make backgrounds and batches and I will often make a few of them in one session that then I have them there ready to grab when I need them. So that's where this piece starts and I didn't know what I wanted to do on it but I knew I wanted to have a main focal image. Whenever I'm not sure how to start a piece I just start with some mark making and some doodling just to get it going. So that's what I'm doing here and it is a little haphazard isn't it? But you know what, it's very freeing and usually whilst I'm making these kind of marks something will come to me, some way forward that will tell me what to do next. And if it doesn't, well, I just keep on making marks. doesn't really matter if it just becomes a big weave of mark making and doodling but today it didn't. Around about after adding the teal and the indigo paintbrush marks I reverted back to a warmer colour palette to make some cross hatch marks and this is because around about here I could see where I wanted to go with this piece and I think because I'd already decided at the beginning that I wanted a large focal image that was in my head and it kind of influenced where I went so I was already thinking along those lines so that only after a few marks I was ready to play with that focal image and I should mention that I'm working on a studio watercolour paper today and you can see all the materials that I've used in the list in the description as usual now studio level watercolour paper tends to be thinner than artist quality paper. It's for playing around with and just testing things out with and I love playing with pieces of paper like this because well if, if I do make something that I like on them then I can scan it and use it in some digital work. But playing around with this kind of paper is a little bit cheaper than playing around with artist quality paper so you can test things out and even though you're going to get different looks because the paint will react differently to different paper you can still get a feel for what you want to do on it but you can see I haven't really stretched it out I, I haven't taped it down to a board and I'm just letting it free roam which does mean it will buckle especially as it is a lighter weight paper and I've already used quite a lot of water on it so it is already buckled if I had been a little bit more organized I would have taped this down to a board from the start <laughs> when I made that background but well, I didn't, so I'm just having to live with it. Can you guess where I decided the focal image was going to go? Yeah, I decided to add some more texture just for the focal image part and again went for a warm colour to fit with that background so really I'm just building up texture here and I love changing up from warm to cold colour families and varying between layers which one I use. It seems to be my thing at the moment and I've only recently realised how much I do it. But if you want to add layers of texture without adding a lot of drama to a piece then stick to either a hot or a, a cold colour palette. So reds, yellows, oranges for your hot and blues and greens for your cold. And then when you're ready to add some drama you can either add a little or a lot of the opposite colour palette. So if you've been doing a lot of hots like I've been doing here then add some touches of a cooler colour and that can really make quite a difference. So on my piece it's all about the warms adding texture and then I've got little bits of cool here just to add some drama and a little bit of interest 
Then when I went to bring out my focal image, well, Cools did it again and provided me with just such a lovely contrast to pop the focal image off the page. Next time you're arting, have a go with changing up from hot to cold and back again when you start layering up your pieces. And you can of course do this whole piece with either just hot or a cold colour palette. So try that as well and do a compare and contrast and see which you prefer. I mean it might be that you like both ways of doing it. So even though I'm doing a really simple shape today for my focal image, I still felt the need to outline it on my piece before committing to it. It's going to be a feather shape. I've been playing around with feathers all of a sudden recently. When I was putting together my first download for my Digi Delightfuls on Patreon, it, it, it took on a bit of a, a feather theme. And it, it wasn't all feathers, but there were a few different types of feathers in the pack. And I don't know what's happened, but since doing that, I've been just playing around with lots of feathers and leaf shapes as well. So you could easily do this with a feather or do it with a leaf or any kind of shape that you wanted. Or you could go with your circles or your other shapes. Do this with butterflies. They're very popular. Hearts you know, all, all of the motifs that we like to play with. Now I sketch my rough shape out with a ballpoint pen, also in a warm colour for the background, so it, it's going to add some texture, but then be pretty much invisible when the piece is finished. Which is lucky, because as I blocked in my background with watercolour, I decided that I'd actually made that feather image a little bit too wide, and I hadn't left enough space on the left. So I rectified that as I added the watercolour layer. So the first background layer was all acrylic paint, by the way, like the other backgrounds that I've been doing recently. So just in case you haven't seen last week's background techniques video yet, I made all of those with acrylic paint and this is another one I made around about the same time with acrylic paint. Another thing that I seem to be into at the moment is working on negative space to pull out my focal image. I'm finding negative space is pretty fascinating at the moment. Is that just me? Okay, yeah, that's probably just me. <laughs> I do get hung up on the weirdest of things from time to time. Once I was happy with the blocked out negative space feather shape, I let it dry completely, then used my favourite pen of all time <laughs> and started to work in some details. And I pretty much decided that I wanted to use this pen right from the start, I and mean, it's a brush pen and you can find it in the list below. It takes cartridges and I quickly realised that uh, my cartridge had actually run out in it and after a little bit of a panic that I <laughs> didn't know where my other cartridges were, I did find some to replace it. So that was lucky. <laughs> and I'd chosen this pen but I wasn't really sure how it would work on all of these layers, the acrylic paint, the watercolour. So I wanted to try it out and it worked really well, I had no trouble with it on this surface at all. One of the things I really love about this pen is how easy it is to get dry brush looks with it and I just really like the texture that you can get.
Now I thought that this was around about it for this piece, but then I was looking at it and I, something wasn't quite right. Oh, there we go. Just a little bit of texture with a different black pen to link the background and the focal image together. Thank you so much for watching today, come and join me on these videos next for some more inspiration and I'll see you there.